Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am back with another Tunisian crochet stitch. If you're not familiar with Tunisian crochet, it's quite different than traditional crochet. I have a video for the basic Tunisian crochet stitch, which is also known as the Afghan stitch, and I will link to that down below, and I will also put it on the end screen. Today we're going to be doing Tunisian double crochet, and I like it much better than the Tunisian basic stitch that we did before. It's much softer, there's no rolling, very minimal rolling, and it's really nice for an afghan. If you are making a block like no bigger than this, you can absolutely use a regular crochet hook. I used this one for this, and I probably could make it a little bit bigger and still be comfortable with this crochet hook. If you want to crochet a block, but a bigger block, you can get a long crochet hook. I'll insert an image right here. And if you want to crochet the full width of an afghan, you can get crochet hooks that have a cable at the end. So you can push all your stitches onto that and you can make a full width afghan. And I'll insert a picture for that here. And I'll have links down below to a variety of these hooks on Amazon and on Walmart.com. The awesome thing about making an entire afghan with the Tunisian stitch is that when your afghan gets bigger on your lap, you never have to turn it. You're always just working with the right side facing you. So that part is really nice. So let's just get started. I'm going to make just an itty bitty block for you for this tutorial. You can chain any number that you want and if you need a basic video on that I will have that linked down below also. I chained 10 and with Tunisian crochet since there is no turning and no turning chain the number that you crochet is the number of stitches that you will have on your hook. We are going to start out this foundation row exactly like the basic Tunisian stitch or the Afghan stitch. You go in to your next available chain and pull through. Go in the next one, pull through. And you're just going to do that all the way across. And on the return pass, we're going to also do the same as we did with the basic stitch. You yarn over and you pull through just one. You always need to remember that. The first time you pull through, it's just through the first chain. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. All the way across, you're going to now pull through two each time. There's our foundation row. From this point on, every row is going to be the same. Chain one, that's how you start. Most people chain two here, but I find that it makes the right side of the block longer or taller than the left. It stretches it out too much, so I chain one. Yarn over, go under the vertical bar. Let's look at this. See all these little bars sticking up? We're going to go under it, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Do not complete the stitch like traditional crochet. You're going to leave that loop there on your hook. Yarn over, go under your bar, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, go under your bar, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. So let's just do that to the end of the row. Then I want to show you when we get to the end, I can, you know, clearly see this uh, vertical bar. This one is not as clear, but you can see it. See what I'm talking about? It's going to be right there. That's the last stitch. So we're doing this one next. Did I yarn over? I have to yarn over, go under, pull through, pull through two, yarn over, and then I'm just going right in that last one. Pull through, pull through two. The return pass is always the same. Yarn over and go through just one. You have to remember that or your, your uh, block is going to be all funky. Yarn over, go through two. 
yarn over, go through two, all the way across. So it's just the first stitch that you go through just one, and then it's through two all the rest of the way. So there we go. I will do another row with you, and then I will show you how you can finish it. Because you can tell the top row is always like not as filled in, but we're going to take care of that. So we're going to start the same way. You always start with chain one. If you'd rather do chain two, play with it. See if you like it with chain two. I prefer it with chain one. So chain one for me. Yarn over under the vertical bar. Same thing. Pull through. Yarn over. Pull through two. And I'm going to just do that all the way across. And again, you can see that last one sometimes gets lost, but it's quite obvious you need to do at least one more because you have some sticking out here. So always just look. These bars are going left and right. This one's going up and down. That's the guy we want. Oops, yarn over first. So right in there. If you ever want to count to make sure that you have the same amount of stitches that you're supposed to have, whatever your chain was, I chained 10. When you have the loops on your hook, that's a good time to count. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So I'm good. Now we'll do the return pass one more time. Yarn over through 1. And then the rest of the row, you're going through 2 at a time. And that's it. You would just keep going as long as you want. You would just keep repeating the same rows that we just did. Now, if you want to finish off and not have this weird, funky thing going on, you have two choices. You're going to just leave this loop right there on your hook. You're going to go under your vertical bar. You can either chain one. I meant single crochet, not chain one. And do that in every vertical bar. And I'll show you what that looks like. It finishes it off like this, which I quite like. I kind of think I like that the best. Or your other option is, well, there's probably a gazillion options, but the other option that I'm showing you, you go under the vertical bar and just do a, a slip stitch. So you're just going to go through both. Under, yarn over, go through both. Let me do a few, and then I'll show you that. And you want to make sure you keep it, you know, not a real tight slip stitch. You want to make it loose enough. Oh, that looks good, too. So it's up to you. Let's just finish it this way. I think that's how I finished the other one that I showed you a little bit ago. And then again, you're like, hmm, I look like I need one more here. And it does, and it's right here. Don't get confused with this guy. This is, this one's going horizontal. This is vertical. There's your bar. Oh, we're doing slip stitch. And that's it. And you can see that the edges are very similar in height. If you chain two at the beginning, it ends up being much more stretched out, which isn't that bad if you're doing just a little block. But if you were to do a whole afghan that way, I can promise you the right side will be way longer than the left side. So I like this method. And that is it. It is really a nice block, and if you like a more loose dishcloth, it's good for that. If I have a crocheted dishcloth with cotton, I like my dishcloths to have a very tight stitch, but some people prefer a more loose one. But this is a really good feel for an afghan, and it's very, very easy to work. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe so you don't miss any future crocheted blocks or quilt blocks or any other thing that I do on my channel. Bye!